Hey everybody, it's Mike here. Today we're talking about NHL 25. That's right, hockey season is among us. And as you know, with every new season and new year is a new NHL game. So in this video, I'm going to kind of go over if it's really worth your money. You know, if you bought NHL 24 or NHL 23, for example, if it's really worth the upgrade and overall, if it's a great package. And this game is no longer on like PS4 or old gen consoles. This is all current gen. So I'm going to have current gen expectations, right? And the first thing I notice when going through these menus is they're clunky as hell. Um, like they're very slow and it really ruins any sort of you know that snappy feeling that we're used to from our normal ps5 games i don't know why they haven't got to the bottom of this they got all this money from hut ea should really improve on these menus but they're very slow and clunky so that was my first thing i noticed really unhappy about that i want to get into everything all the new features and i want to at, at the end i'm really going to give you my overall thoughts on the state of ea and really how you know how the NHL franchise is doing and overall if you should buy the game. So make sure you stick till the end. I really was not too interested in buying this. Um, honestly, if I didn't have this review channel, I probably wouldn't have bought it this early at least. But I wanted to make sure to check it out so I can give you guys the best possible information so you can make a, a you know a solid purchase decision. And I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. Um, basically, this is now on current gen, like I said. So um, the current gen graphics, uh, there is an improvement there, but it's nothing you haven't seen before, right? It's, you still have these crappy audience. Like, why haven't they updated the audience yet? It's this such an easy fix that EA can do. If they just fi fix the audience so the crowds look more lifelike um, and not everybody's wearing the same shirt, it literally looks like PS2 graphics still. And it, I'm very disappointed in that because you know, this year is supposed to be the big move into next gen and some of the, the characters just look silly. And we're in 2024 now, It's we should have higher standards of this, especially when you move your game into, you know, a current gen console. And I'm playing on the PS5. And of course, yes, they are graphical improvements. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, the face, the facial animations uh, look a lot better. The actual, just the overall, you know, design of the characters, like and the jerseys and everything you're going to notice an improvement but it's not like a huge leap like you would find like that what you expect from a new console it looks very samey to last year if you played nhl 24 and you kind of put these side to side it's going to be take you a really long time to kind of notice those big changes so kind of disappointed there i expected a lot more in terms of a visual overhaul presentation wise one thing where they really improved is they finally moved the scoreboard at the top left corner where it belongs uh, for the last few years we had it at the bottom and i don't know why they would do that um, you know you're always having to look down and when you're playing hockey you're looking up so you would it would almost distract you if you ever had to look at the scoreboard so this is a very welcome improvement. I'm surprised they didn't an, uh, action this earlier, but they fixed it. So great to have that. Yeah, overall, the character models just look better, um, but nothing too special. And you still have those stupid um, laser show entrances. It's so lazy. It's so lazy. Uh, but these, uh, you know, when, when the matches start, um, they just have the stupid light show and it lasts like five seconds. Um, there's no, like, that full you know proper entrance that it should be so i'm really disappointed in that and one thing ea is, is really good at is their marketing slogans and this year it's called ice q and ice q you know has a host of those different changes or you know they say that uh, they've improved the ai to the point where the ai can react appropriately according to the player so they'll open themselves for a pass better and just overall better ai intelligence and you know i i did notice some improvements like i do and you know this could be just from from my brief experience here but it's nothing groundbreaking is the ai still going to make dumb choices and it's not something i've noticed a lot um, one thing they did also add is something called next gen vision and movement uh, so basically this all this is is when it's active players will kind of use the net as their target opening their bodies to make plays so they also improved on how like one timers are performed they call it skill based one timers uh, basically it's just 
it's more pronounced when you do score a one-timer and uh, it's I find they're a lot more effective this year but they've always been effective so it's it hasn't changed very often if anything I find they're going in even more now so you know this is uh, definitely a year of, for the one-timers for those who like to score like that uh, but that's it pretty much when it comes to ice cube it's very very fancy word for uh, you know very basic new features nothing incredible now, I know it's all sounding pretty negative uh, but they did improve the franchise mode um, nothing incredible of course uh, but they did make some useful improvements um, and it comes from mostly from the UI change so uh, you know they've added a better kind of easier to navigate UI so it, it's uh, still slow of course I, I don't know why they haven't sped up the menus but I like how they've added box scores so you can now you know in, in one screen you can see all the different matches you know look at all the different stats from the matches from this screen you know see their star players and I really like I really like that they added that I think that's a huge improvement and it, it makes the, the simulation feel more alive they've actually added new stuff when it turns to you know contracts they finally added no movement clauses for each contract year um, you know no trade clauses stuff like that so there's more options for how you kind of set up contracts and that's a really good improvement and another much welcome enhancement would be that you can now see the different awards and achievements the players have made over the years in franchise mode and it's a great sense of progression and you can see you know the different awards they won in previous years and it's, it's just great that they added that i'm surprised they didn't have it already uh, but nonetheless it's great addition overall of all the game modes i think franchise mode seems the most love and care and this is what i wanted right i uh, even looking at my previous nhl reviews i've always wanted them to kind of focus a little bit more on franchise mode because that's the mode i spend the most time with you know i know some people are all about hut that's not me i, I like the simulation aspect of things and they've definitely fine-tuned the 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 franchise mode so this is great obviously they haven't had it added gm connected yet which i'm really surprised um, but nonetheless, you can still do roster sharing and, you know, create your own fantasy rosters in franchise mode, you know, using, uh, you know, old school alumni teams and stuff like that, you know, old players. So there's so many different options in franchise mode. You can also interact with your players and kind of convince them to kind of switch their play style or switch their positioning. Um, this could actually lead to a decrease of morale. So uh, be careful with that. But I like that open-endedness they have you know i know we had that option in fifa to kind of you know move your players and kind of move them into different positions so that that's a good addition overall and overall uh and just in terms of gameplay everything has been slowed down quite a bit and at first i didn't know how i felt about this uh, but the more i played the uh, more i actually appreciate it and i guess the more realism uh, the more realistic it is right because it's all about setting up correct plays and, and that's what hockey's about right it's about you know pa passing properly and the passing does feel a lot better this year um so that's definitely a positive i think them slowing things down um definitely helps i like the the stick lifting and the poke checking it just feels a lot better than ever um you know we used to call it like the penalty button but now i i don't think i think you can actually stick lift properly this year um as long as you angle yourself correctly and uh, you know you don't spam it like crazy but i like the stick lifting and the poke checking it all feels great and the the fact that they slowed it down is a lot more you know who you pass it to of co course they still have the the pressure system and stuff like that but i think they ironed out some of the kinks and just the gameplay just it's actually improved and it's a lot more fun um on the downside, I do find a lot of stupid goals are going in and random goals. I don't know if it's just my luck, but um, I've noticed consistently some very odd goals are going in. Again, I noticed the goalies are making incredible saves at the same time. So um, overall, I think gameplay is an improvement. I'm really happy to say that, by the way, because, you know, with these NHL games, that's what it's all about, right? It's all about the, the you know, the, the fun gameplay. Um, and I knew they slew it, slowed it down a bit, but I didn't think it would be you know an improvement right i like how they did it you have to play to kind of see but them slowing things down you know really gives you time to you know make those passes and you know i'm, I'm enjoying the gameplay quite a bit now be a pro mode on the other hand i'm not as happy with uh let's be honest here 
if you've played be a pro and sit from like NHL 19, you've played the same be a pro. It's like they haven't changed a damn thing. And I don't know how they get away with this. I don't I really don't understand how EA thinks it's okay to re-release the same game mode over and over. Um, you still even even when you start your be a pro, it's the same cutscene. It's the same exact cutscene for the last five years. It's absolutely ridiculous. Guys, this is what happens when there's no competition. When there's no competition, you just do whatever the heck you want and you release this type of quality. Um, you know, look, look at like, for example, I remember even NHL 14. I swear back in the day, we were able to start and play a season in the OHL, you know, work your way up into the AHL or NHL. And there was more of an actual simulation experience. Now this is just like, you know, quick, let's get you right into the NHL. There's no, you start off as what, like a 73 or something. And there's no progression in that. A lot of the conversations in Be A Pro are still stupid. And these text-based conversations really don't add a lot to the experience. Um, you know, the, let's look at other sports games and, and the type of, you know, Be A Pro modes they have. This uh, really has nothing on it. And it's a really pathetic uh, state. I used to love playing Be A Pro, but I don't think I'm going to bother with this year. They they really need to focus. So if you haven't played Be A Pro, if you haven't played Be A Pro in maybe you know six years, there'll be something different. But it's literally the recycled copy and paste from the last five years, and I personally think it's unacceptable. And I really can't tell you how much I miss you know creating a character. I think it must have been since NHL 20, where we can start in you know the OHL, work your way up. You know, you know, you, you don't start off at a, at a super high rating and there was a really true sense of progression. And now it's uh, it's really lame. It's it's uh, unacceptable. Um, and in terms of World of Chell, um, not my most played game mode, but they did touch it up a bit. So now they've added live events. Like, for example, right now they have the NHL 94 Rewind, which kind of makes the ice that pixelated blue. Um, really cool, uh, but yeah, for HUD, it's really the same thing. If anything, it's it's quite egregious, some of these packs. There is a one pack right now in the store that actually costs more than the deluxe version of this game. It's like $130 or something stupid. Please don't buy this pack. Please don't buy any of these packs. If you watch my channel, you know, you're smart enough to know not to waste your money. Don't give these guys any money. You know, it's, it's this mode is just gone to real crap. Like, I mean, they... <laughs> And when I say that, I don't mean like the quality of it, just the egregious types of microtransactions here is ridiculous. You shouldn't have any pack that's worth $130. It's really too much. So um, I hope you guys don't get too sucked into HUT. Um, if I play HUT, I just, you know, I'll play it and I, I won't put any money into it. Um, but other than that, it, it's, it's, it's not worth it. And of course, they added this like wild card mode, which, you know, you create unique presets and per competition so like different salary caps you know having uh, particular players from a specific nation stuff like that stuff you would find in those FIFA games uh, another little addition they added to HUD is they kind of unified you know how you gain XP so whether you're playing squad battles rivals or wildcard mode the XP you gain on those modes will uh, kind of be towards a single progression path um, I'm not too too wild about it like I said I'm not going to spend too much time with HUD this year it just seems way too expensive and I personally get more enjoyment out of, you know, the franchise mode and more longevity out of that. I'll still f have fun with Hut here and there, but no, I'm not going to hear, uh, I'm not going to hear sweat raging, trying to get myself the highest rated card and it's just not worth it to me in terms of, of value. They also added this infinite camera system, which pretty much works like photo mode. So uh, you can take def different better screenshots and videos of gameplay and I, I will have to say like with the graphics looking better you know the replays actually do look a lot better especially when it's close you really notice the graphical overhaul when they're, they're really close up to the players so a yeah, little improvement there one last comment I'd like to make is on the actual soundtrack which leaves a lot to be desired uh, it's not that great and uh, I find even over the past you know, five to 10 years, the soundtrack has gone downhill. All right, now I'm gonna give my final thoughts here. Uh, so should you buy NHL 25 is the real question here. Um, let's say you haven't bought an NHL game in like five years, then yeah, I, I would say it'd be worth it. Um, they have meaningful gameplay improvements. So yes, um, they are just getting really lazy here. Um, I feel like 
EA has a monopoly over the hockey franchise, NHL franchise. So uh, it's like they have no competition, so they don't have to innovate. They can just add a little gameplay tweak, you know, and then call it a day. Um, and, and it's unacceptable. For example, I know I mentioned this before in the review, but you should be able to, you know, move your way up the NA to the NHL from the OHL or something like that and be a pro. They haven't touched that game mode, which is 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 un unacceptable. They have to do something next year. Um, they need to fix those menus. Those menus are just just very clunky and slow. And this is moving into next gen. We should have had that fixed. Um, but otherwise, um, it's it's a decent package overall. I'm not going to recommend it easily. I'm saying it may be on a sale. I would buy it. But you know, I've been more disappointed, like last year, for example, and stuff like that. So. Um, I would say, uh, like I said, wait till it goes on sale or if you haven't bought NHL in a very long time, maybe pick it up. But overall, EA has some work to do. They need to actually improve and innovate. And I don't think that's going to happen until maybe, you know, 2K starts uh, releasing NHL games. And then we'll finally see some improvement. But right now, you know, EA is just resting on their laurels and we are getting the same crap every year. So, And also these these microtransactions, for example, like $130 pack. Come on, it's it's that's unacceptable. Otherwise, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review and you got all the information you need to kind of make a purchase decision. And otherwise, uh, if you haven't checked out my channel already, uh, please do. I do review the latest games and everything else. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.